the members from the science and adventure club undertook an adventurous journey over the frozen zanskar river in the month of january 2012 to walk on its challenging terrain and to experience the extreme cold for the inhabitants of padum linkshed fotoska and yerak this river of ice remained the only way to commute to trade butter and their other wares during winter we covered a distance of 120 kilometers in 8 days from chilling to padum and back the valleys of ladakh and zangskar lie in the trans himalayan zone during the harsh himalayan winter the high passes and the roads are blocked by heavy snowfall we have to fly over a confluence of himalayan icy glaciers a series of parallel valleys filled with snow and ice towering snow peaks and the frozen river indus to reach leh the capital of ladakh that lies on the ancient silk route we spent 2 days at leh to acclimatize ourselves to the wintry chill weather when temperatures plunged to minus 20 degrees celsius the snow covered willows and poplars stood stoically the shepherd boys took their sheep to graze on the sparse green pastures all the buildings and monuments lay covered with a white mantle of snow the himalayan magpie adds color to the white snowscape before we undertook the journey we started on a tour of all the holy gompas in and around leh the shanti stupa the hemis gompa the tikse monastery and the ancient alchi built by ringchen zongpo to receive the blessings of the enlightened buddhas and the bodhisattvas of the buddhist pantheon saikyamuni avalokiteshvara manjushri padmasambhava maitreyi the future buddha demachong in ecstatic union with vajra vairohi and the extremely gracious goddess tara om tare do tare dhure so ha 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 Om tare tu tare dure 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 The drive to our roadhead chilling 40 kilometers from Leh was on the snowbound Leh Srinagar highway en route to chilling at Nimmo we see the confluence of the two rivers Zangskar and the Indus in winter the waters of the Zangskar freeze and form a sheet of ice and snow known as the chadar which means blanket in zangskari there is plenty of evidence here that this region was a part of the tethys sea millions of years ago the sand and the pebbles of the beach pressurized by the tectonic plate movements of the continental drift rose up and formed fold mountains the chadar is not uniformly frozen at certain places 
it is a strong and tough sheet of ice but at certain others it is dangerously broken and there lurks the hazard of drowning on the first day of the chadar after a few initial falls on the slippery sheet beneath our feet we learned to tread carefully and reached tilak do our first campsite the temperature that night plummeted to minus 30 degrees celsius the actual expedition on the chadar begins from tilak do we attached ice walkers or crampons to our heavy climbing boots which helped us to negotiate the ice and snow spread before us at one point there was a huge outcrop of rock and the narrow path of ice was very slippery we had to lie on our stomachs and crawl under the rock for a few meters welcome to the gateway of chadar In days of yore Buddhist monks used these silent dark caves to meditate and discover their inner selves the beach site of markala on the way to trips cave our next destination we encountered a difficult terrain coupled with mild snowfall and whiteout condition we had to tread carefully and slowly for one careless slip and we would be frozen instantly in the icy cold waters we could hear the ice crack beneath our feet and see the water flowing under a sheet of ice as we walked over it The kiongs or wild asses were roaming on the craggy rocks. The carcass of a red fox lay well preserved and undisturbed on the snow. When we started to nearak, we had to cross rockfall areas, walk over the partly frozen river, and step carefully on the melting waters. This forced us to increase our pace. The spectacular waterfall that now looks like an ice sculpture has an interesting story spun around it. A long time ago, the people of this village had to walk miles afar down the river to collect water. They prayed to Lord Buddha, who presented the village leader with a vessel. He asked him to empty it at a particular place in their village. The chieftain emptied the vessel 
and out sprang a fish. Along with it emerged a spring, from which water flowed down the mountains, creating a magical cascade. The Nyarak Pulu is a fascinating strong wooden bridge many meters above the waterway, built from the natural material available. This connects the village with Lingshed during summer when the river gushes boisterously. From Nyarak, the trail gets very tough and narrow. We had to go over thin layers of ice and sometimes dig our feet into powdery snow or walk in ankle-deep freezing water. We entered the narrowest part of the gigantic gorge where the river is hardly 15 feet across. sun's scorching rays hit the ice field, the river thawed, making it impossible to walk on. We crossed this tricky portion with the help of climbing ropes. In places where the chadar was broken, we scrambled over boulders and climbed a steep slope before we reached Sarakdo, where the newly constructed road coming from Padum ends. At many points, the rapids had frozen in action to form interesting sculptures. Every minute, suspense lingers in the air around, for the flow we were walking on could change with the appearance and the disappearance of the sun. A vehicle took us to Zangla, en route to Padum. The Stongde Monastery stood aloft a small mountain top, completely covered with snow. The wind carries the vibrations of these consecrated money stones over hills and valleys. 